This is perhaps the most heavily weaponized class of ships in the world ever. The Russian Kirov-class battlecruiser. This ship is nuclear-powered, making it stealthy, especially when compared to the conventionally-powered Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov, which infamously has an exhaust smoke that's visible from space. While Americans classify this ship as a battlecruiser, Russians simply call it a cruiser, which is not that surprising. You see, Russia also considers its only aircraft carrier to be a cruiser. And I guess this corvette is just Yuri's fishing boat. But jokes aside, nuclear-powered cruisers are not unheard of. In fact, Americans used to operate nine nuclear cruisers. But they were all decommissioned in the 1990s due to high maintenance costs. Even then, the largest American nuclear cruiser, USS Long Beach, was roughly half the size of Kirov-class cruisers. Which is why Pyotr Veliki, the only active ship in this class, is the closest thing to a modern-day nuclear battleship, making her the largest nuclear-powered warship in the world, after aircraft carriers, of course. But why this nuclear-powered cruiser has a giant smokestack like conventionally-powered ships do? Why the ship's missile silos have to be flooded with seawater like submarines do? And why being armed to the teeth makes this ship a liability for the Russian Navy is not what you think. If you thought the giant smokestack was to exhaust nuclear radiation, you're not even close. Consider this. What if the nuclear reactor failed? The Soviets had learned from their nuclear-powered icebreakers that there could be some problems with this technology. So they had a second nuclear reactor on board as backup. But what if the backup reactor also failed? It would have been too embarrassing for the mighty Soviet battlecruiser to be towed back to port with not just one, but two failed nuclear reactors as the metaphorical tail between her legs. This is why two oil-burning boilers were installed on the ship as a backup to the backup nuclear reactor, allowing the ship to continue sailing for up to a thousand miles at a speed of 17 knots. That's what the smokestack was for. But on the Kirov-class battlecruisers, the smoke is nowhere as visible as it is on the Russian aircraft carrier Kuznetsov. That said, those two pictures that you saw earlier are actually photoshopped. I also fell for it once. But after a simple reverse search of the satellite image, it turns out it's the smoke from the eruption of Etna volcano. And this one's actually from an oil rig that was on fire. So don't blindly trust things you see on the internet, including what I say. The two nuclear reactors aboard Pyotr Veliki gives the ship unlimited range for 10 years at a time, after which they need to be refueled. Each reactor produces 103 megawatts of power, which is enough to supply a city with 150,000 inhabitants. Now that may seem like a lot, but it's not enough. You see, a rarely advertised fact is that the Kirov-class battlecruisers are unable to achieve their maximum speed on nuclear power alone. Nuclear only gives the ship a sustained speed of 20 knots. To reach the maximum speed of 33 knots, the ship relies on the combined nuclear and steam propulsion system, which means the ship has to run on both nuclear and boiler power. But this is not the real limitation, since the ship rarely sails at maximum speed. The real limitation is the other ships. Pyotr Veliki's maximum speed is handicapped by the speed of the Admiral Kuznetsov task force, which usually travels at 18 knots. The original requirements for sailing at 30 knots plus came from the idea that the Kirov class would protect the Ulyanovsk nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. But the construction of that carrier was stopped when the Soviet Union was dissolved. But why did the Soviets build this nuclear leviathan? Before I answer that, if you're interested to get more hands-on with the Kirov class, you can do so when you play War Thunder, the sponsor of today's video. The original Kirov class cruiser is one of the more than 2,000 historically accurate vehicles that you can choose on War Thunder to partake in arcade battles and tactical wars. While much smaller than the modern-day version, the 1930s Kirov-class featured three triple 7.1-inch guns. But what's even more impressive was its maximum speed, clocking at 36 knots. If you're new to the game, you can enjoy the mouse-aim playing mode, which is easy and intuitive. 
This allows you to get your feet wet as you get more into the game. And aside from naval battles, you can also enjoy playing as part of the Air Force and Army too. In War Thunder, the physics of the game is quite realistic and you don't need a fancy gaming computer either. You can enjoy playing War Thunder on a regular PC, Xbox or PlayStation. This game is in fact fully cross-platform. On top of that, there are free bonuses like a premium tank, aircraft and ship, 100,000 silver lions and a 7-day premium account. Just register using the link in the description and claim your exclusive bonus. In the early 1960s, the US Navy commissioned its first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise, and two nuclear-powered cruisers, USS Long Beach and USS Bainbridge. This became known as the US Navy's Task Force One, also dubbed the Nuclear Navy. As part of Operation Sea Orbit, the three nuclear ships sailed around the world for 65 days while maintaining a speed of 26 knots without ever having to refuel. This put the Soviet leadership under a lot of pressure to develop their own Task Force One. Originally, the Soviets started developing two separate nuclear-powered ships that were much smaller. One was an anti-submarine warship and the other was a destroyer with focus on air defense. But eventually both ships were combined into one larger ship as part of Project 1144 or LAN. Even though the Soviets laid down five Kirov-class ships, only four were finished, with the last one, Pyotr Veliki, commissioned by Russia in 1998. Back in the 1980s, when Kirov-class ships entered the Soviet service, the US Navy decided to bring four Iowa-class battleships back to life, to add more muscle to its fleet. Although the commissioning of the Kirov was not the real reason why the US Navy brought back its World War II-era battleships. The primary reason for this reactivation was President Reagan's push for a 600-ship navy. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the other three ships of the Kirov class were put in reserve since it was too expensive to operate and maintain them. Similarly, the Americans retired their four Iowa-class battleships in the early 1990s, and this time for good. The design of this nuclear behemoth was simple. If the Soviet leadership saw any empty spaces on the ship, the designers had to make sure to fill it in. Besides armament, which I'll cover in depth shortly, there are 20 kilometers of hallways on this ship, 140 staterooms for officers, and 32 berthing areas for sailors. There's also two saunas and one small pool. Grandma is unfortunately not included, but sailors receive a daily glass of red wine. In total, the ship houses 744 sailors. Weighing at 25,860 tons, Pyotr Veliki is three times the size of an Arleigh destroyer, and yet, it's still only about half the size of World War II era battleships, such as Bismarck and the Iowa class. But being smaller than half a century old battleships doesn't make this ship any less lethal. In fact, quite the opposite. The Soviets designed the Kirov-class battlecruisers with the goal of putting every single naval weapon that they had into it. They really ordered every item that was on the menu. Just for comparison, US Navy's Arleigh Burke-class destroyers have 96 VLS cells. And Ticonderoga-class cruisers have 122 VLS cells. Note that evolved Sea Sparrow missiles are quad-packed inside a single VLS cell. Additionally, both classes carry up to 8 Harpoon missiles, and the Arleigh also has a sea ramp with 11 missiles. But the Kirov battlecruiser carries up to 386 missiles of various kinds. This more than doubles and triples the amount of armament that US Navy's cruisers and destroyers carry, respectively. The main armament of the battlecruiser are the 20 giant missile launch cells that house P-700 Granite anti-ship cruise missiles. Each missile weighs about 7 tons and can be armed with a 1,600-pound explosive warhead or a 500-kiloton nuclear bomb that can be delivered up to 388 miles away. Soviets claim that it's impossible to intercept it, because even if there was a direct hit, the rocket would fly to its target by inertia, simply because it's so big. 
Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I'm somewhat skeptical about this claim. However, what is true is that the missiles can be launched in swarm mode, in groups of four or eight. In this approach, one missile flies higher than others in order to select and distribute the targets to the other missiles in order of priority. This ensures the maximum probability of destroying the highest priority target. Russians claim that their only active Kirov-class cruiser, Pyotr Veliki, can sink any aircraft carrier in the world within minutes with the help of granite missiles. With that said, granite missiles are 1970s technology. In the West, it's widely believed that even if all 20 missiles were launched, the modern Aegis combat system aboard US Navy cruisers and destroyers would easily intercept all of them. So far, not a single granite missile has ever been used in combat. But why did the launch cells aboard the Kirov-class battlecruiser get flooded with seawater prior to the launch of the missile? The reason is that the granite missiles were originally designed for submarines. In other words, granite missiles were designed to be launched from underwater. So instead of redesigning the launch system, Soviet engineers decided to save a lot of money and time and added the launch system to the battle cruiser as is, which meant the launch cells would need to be flooded just like a submarine. Another unique weapon system aboard the battle cruiser is the RPK-6 Vodapad, which in Russian means waterfall. It's a torpedo tube launched missile, which is ejected into the water from one of the 10 torpedo tubes on the ship. A few seconds later, a solid fuel rocket engine propels the missile out of the water and travels up to 31 miles to its target. Next, the missile deploys either a nuclear depth charge or a torpedo, both of which aim to destroy an enemy submarine. Speaking of submarines, the battle cruiser houses three Ka-27 and Ka-31 helicopters inside its hangar below the stern deck, which can be used to track enemy submarines. But what about incoming missile attacks? Well, to say that the battle cruiser can defend itself would be an understatement, as it has a multi-layer anti-air defense system. For long-range air defense, the Kirov class is equipped with the S-300 Fort Missile System, which is basically a land-based S-300 missile system fitted under the hull of the ship. The giant rotating drums hold a total of 94 long-range missiles on Pyotr Veliki. Each missile has a maximum range of 93 miles. For mid-range air defense, the battle cruiser is equipped with 128 Kinjal surface-to-air missiles, which have a range of up to 7.5 miles. Finally, the ship is equipped with not one, not two, three, four, or five, but six Cortic close-in weapon systems. Cortic can destroy incoming targets up to 2.5 miles away with its two 30mm rotary cannons that shoots 9,000 rounds per minute. Cortic is also equipped with eight missile tubes that can intercept targets up to five miles away. The Russians claim that the Cortic's effectiveness in destroying incoming targets is somewhere between 96 and 99 percent. And if all of the above wasn't enough, there is a giant AK-130 dual-barrel 130mm cannon that can launch 90 projectiles within a minute up to 14 miles away. That would equate to about 4 tons of metals and explosives being ejected from the barrel. The gun is fully automatic since it's fully computerized and takes into account both the speed of the ship and the motion of the waves. The gun can also be fired manually from within in case of a computer malfunction. It's worth noting that all four Kirov-class battlecruisers were built slightly differently and had slightly different armaments. As new weapon systems were developed, they were immediately installed on the newest ship of the class. And that approach remains true to this day, since Russians are currently refurbishing the Admiral Nakhimov battlecruiser to carry Kalib cruise missiles, P-800 Onyx anti-ship missiles, and the Panzer M anti-air missile system. The Russian hypersonic missile Tsirkan is also planned to be installed on Admiral Nakhimov. Russians have literally stuck a weapon in every corner of these ships. But having a large and heavily weaponized ship is actually a liability, 
because it makes the ship the highest priority target. Two smaller cruisers can carry as many missiles, but now you have to hit two targets instead of one. Now you might think that for such a powerful ship, the battle cruiser would have an impressive resume of combat missions. Well, maybe it's good that it doesn't, but here's Pyotr Veliki's most memorable deployments. In February 2009, the ship was conducting anti-pirate operations in the Gulf of Aden. The crew of the Russian warship managed to capture a total of three Somalian pirate boats, while most ships apprehended were peaceful fishing vessels. Now, if you ask me, using a large nuclear-powered surface warship to hunt pirates is an overkill. It's like using a cannon to shoot mosquitoes. Beside that one anti-pirate incident, Pyotr Veliki has sailed once alongside the aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov in 2016. As impressive as Kirov-class battle cruisers are, they are very expensive to maintain. The harsh reality is that after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia simply couldn't afford to maintain all four of its nuclear leviathans. So three out of four were essentially mothballed. In 2019, it was decided that the two battle cruisers in reserve, Admiral Ushakov and Admiral Lazarev, would be scrapped, as it would be too expensive to modernize them. The third battle cruiser, Admiral Lakhimov, has been sitting at a shipyard at Severodvinsk since 1997 and is expected to rejoin the Russian Navy in 2024. And as for Pyotr Veliki, in 2023 it was reported that she would also be scrapped, since it would just be too expensive to refurbish her. Play War Thunder. This free vehicle combat game works on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Click the link in the description to take advantage of War Thunder's exclusive bonuses for Not What You Think viewers.